Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Off the Mark once again. We are on episode 19 of this wonderful podcast that I hope you guys are enjoying, and it seems like we're growing, it seems like things are happening, it seems like uh, we're getting feedback more and more, which is wonderful, so thank you guys so much for that. Um, I am your host, Tootie O, as always, and with me is my wonderful co-host, my absolute queen of the uh, podcast, Miss Meeks Kali, my wonderful co-host. So, my dear, how are you? Hello, love. <laughs> so excited oh, to be here for another one. Thank you, thank you. Yay, yay, yay. <laughs> for this yes, glorious yes. introduction. Yay. So, uh, as, as, we, as we told you guys, where we want to do a continuation of what we um, were talking about in the previous episode, uh, episode 18, um, we did focus on Wall Street and the Great Reset in the last episode. Um, if, you, if you haven't seen it, please, by all means, catch it because, and, and catch the ones previous that, that introduced the Great uh, Reset to us, um, as these are things that we do have to prepare for, whether um, we see them or not, but they are there. But anyway, uh, last episode for me was mind opening. I, I still, I, I think about it. It gives me chills till this day. And it's been a few days. So it's a wonderful episode. So if you haven't caught it, please check it out. So as I said, um, uh, so uh, oh, the reason why I brought last episode is because uh, it was very long winded. It was, it was more than an hour and a half long. Um, which the longest is, one um, yet. <laughs> the longest one yet, but uh, yeah, also yes. absolutely wonderful. We couldn't, we couldn't. We can't uh, <laughs> Uh, well, we couldn't stop. It wasn't. It wasn't gab by any means. It was absolutely right. informative. It was amazing, um, but we had meant to bring you um, information on uh, Alexandria uh, Alexandria Casio Cortez, which we did. Um, we meant to bring you more information, extensive information on Biden and his um, executive orders, uh, which will happen. Um, some new information on Donald Trump and an update on him. And again, information on our, again, our favorite person on earth, Mr. Hunter Biden, which is going to be really kind of fun to, to uh, talk about because Hunter Biden is another example of AOC and a lot of other people that want to sit there and steer the, um, steer the narrative. And, right. and they're at, they are absolutely propaganda machines. That's all they're used mm -hmm. for. And it's very obvious. And, and it, it's easy to pick on them because it's, it's obvious that they do what they do. So it's going to be kind of fun to go through all of that. So without further means, Miss Meeks Kali, you can take over whatever you'd like. I'm all in and I will go with you on that. Otherwise, I will, you know. Right. Um, well, let's start off with some of Biden's executive orders. So he has been getting a lot of... Um, yeah, encouragement or compliments, praise for basically blowing his predecessors out of the water with his executive actions. He's a man that's like presidents that's taken over, you know, and um, now the question is whether Congress will bother to get involved once the president has made such changes. And at the moment, this tenuous style of yo-yo policymaking is how our government works. So basically you know like he can yammer and he can say what he wants but <laughs> we'll see once the dust settles what all is actually legal or can take or not but um it's been very apparent where his focus lies and that it's coordinating with fitting perfectly you know um in hand with particular agendas and yeah so um Tootie what do you think stood out most to you from his executive orders from all of the executive orders for me was the one where he wanted to uh, use um, the overflow or, or the, the cages or wh 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 whatever it was that, that, that they were trying to say that Trump was, was trying to use, right? You know, right. so so Trump was using cages to put uh, was trying to use put it, but I was trying to put kids in cages. Um, I don't care, do you? Who built right, the cages? Right. The, I don't care, do you? <laughs> With uh, Melania Trump and putting on her raincoat, and I don't know what the hell that meant. I I, I really don't. And Q Q and on has their own theories as to what I that mean, meant. Just and then anyway, that, <laughs> that became a whole thing. So if you're watching this and you and you already and you already took the red pill, you already understand what we're talking about. So it's <laughs> double deep fake. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, but at the same time, um, uh, uh, a lot of people understood that that the um the Trump or I'm sorry that the the cages and what they call 
what they called cages, but were what what what, what were tents and or camps and you know there were fences and and this and that you know I, I, there were certain things that were questionable if you, in my opinion if you look through picture I I don't think treating immigrants that way is okay but at the same time mm -hmm. there are um, there are other ways to manage things like that so if we have to send them back home and overseas there are humane ways to do that as opposed to putting them in 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 these facilities where where they are uh, restrained. There is no. There is no reason to restrain these human beings from trying to escape um, uh, a, a situation that, that they should never have been in as as human beings. So, given that that human life is equal in 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 the United States of America, human life should be equal to a refugee as well. Right. You know. Re, you know. Regardless of how the refugee gets here, and unfortunately, that is how it is, ladies and gentlemen. And 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 that being said. I, I, there are immigration standards that we have to stand to for safety reasons, which is just fine. At the same time, we have to understand that, that, that there are people that need help from countries that are better than them. They don't just come to the United States. They go to other countries as well. Look at Europe. If, if, if you look at Europe, Europe has absolutely 100% open border countries. It hasn't helped them in one, in, in one bit. But at the same time, uh, that these these countries and these people were desperate enough that, that they had to leave and they are not in any better situations let, let, let's let's put it let's put it out there right if you dig deep these people are not in any better situations than they were aside from the fact that they're not getting bombed anymore we are not in that situation but at the same time we are fortunate to be a country where other countries can come for refuge and that's where they come so and you know so we we bite the bullet on that end and 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 you know that's unfortunate, but at the same time, it's it's endearing. But again, America first. So that being said, we as Americans do not seem to do not we don't not, we we don't have the um, idea that that we're 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 being treated in the same way. We don't have the and the truth is we're not we're we're, we're not and like, at least we feel that way because the news tells us and and as far as politics and facts go and grams go and diagraphs and graphs there's a lot of money being sent overseas as opposed to the money that's being sent here or staying right. here mathematically. So, you know, that, that's where we come from with it. You know, so that, that, that being said, you know, uh, the America first aspect isn't there, you know, so, you know, him opening the, um, the overflow of the immigration borders, in my opinion, has nothing to do with the fact that he's trying to help, help refugees if you ask me, it has more to do with the aspect of them opening the borders for them uh, to have a lot of more luxury to bring in drugs and sex trafficking um, things that are happening. And it's been proven many, many times before that our government has been guilty of such things. This is why the Epstein thing uh, has come about and has been dug, uh, has been put away and with a uh, uh, Jelaine Maxwell, is that her name? Yeah, Jelaine and Maxwell. Yeah. She was arrested, and from then on, we heard nothing about her. Right. So there's, there are <laughs> things happening under the rugs, and at the same time, if you actually look them up, there are sex trafficking rings that are being um, swept away from Georgia, from Louisiana, even from L.A., even uh, uh, most recently mm -hmm. from here in L.A., 20 people, I think, were rescued yeah. in L.A., <laughs> Uh, just it, these are actually major news stories, and we don't we don't connect them as something. Oh, oh my God, you know, oh my God, how terrible a sex ring! But no, these are actually all connected. These are things that are connected, and, and it's not a, it's not a sudden coincidence that they're being completely torn down. You know, you know. So with that being said, you know, his idea of of opening these overflow cages so that kids come into this this country unattended and and the thing is and, and it's mathematically said that one in three of these children that come into this country come in with adults that are not attended or or, or do not have dna of these adults they don't right. have the same dna they're they're not they, they, their parents uh, they're they're not they're not with their parents which gives the u.s government permission every right to take them away from the people that they're with so that kind of tells you something either either they're being paid for these children to be sent over Mm -hmm. Or they're so desperate for the kids to be involved in the DACA program, which wouldn't happen either way, because these children are, 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 are not being accompanied by a parent, you know, so it, it wouldn't make any sense that way. 
Right. These, these children are literally just being trafficked with upon the belief that these parents on the other side of, the, uh, of, of our, of our, our uh, 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 equator are, are sitting there thinking that our kids are going to have a better life here or their, their children are going to have a better life here. It doesn't happen that way. In fact, it hasn't happened that way. In fact, Mexico, Guatemala, a lot of Central America has had tons of trains that have been filled with people that have been simply just shot up and anybody who survived those shootings are taken and being sex trafficked. So these people sit there in their trains thinking they're going to be rescued, piling on, piling on. Yes, yes, we're going to take you to America. We're going to take you to better life. We're going to take you to this. We're going to, you're going to be able to uh, provide for your family. And, and along with them, some of them are actually families, bunches of human beings into a train. And then what, what happens is they, they put these people on these trains and they, they, they don't gas them or, or anything, you know, uh, of that nature. They, they literally just take a gun, a uh, 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 death by firing squad, and they actually shoot these people. And it's been on the news, Latin American news. I'm not making it up. Otherwise, I wouldn't say it out loud. It's been in Latin American news. I, I, I don't know if you can find it till the to now, but, but it's been in the news that these trends of these trains that pay, that may, that, that, make people pay money for them to be rescued, for them to be involved in, 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 these, in these caravans to, to take them overseas or, or to take them over to America. They're, they're, yeah, they're real. Yeah. And I can imagine that who, whoever survives, and I imagine a lot of small children survive because they're small and they, they have a lot of hiding spots in these trains. And, and, and I'm, I'm kind of go, just going by like scenario basis. Right, Anecdotal you can basis. picture them like I, fitting in the crevices, like that. Yeah, the, unfortunately, I, I don't have numbers uh, on, or people on guarding exactly them or... who was saved and who was not. But the, re the, the those aren't necessarily publicly disclosed. <laughs> not just that, but it's kind of irrelevant because right. the pattern, the pattern of um, of of the way things are taken and the way coyotes are used, you know, it, it, it kind of falls into place. Coyotes are used to, to bring people into another country, mainly the United States of America, be it Arizona, New Mexico, sometimes California. California is not that easy, but probably easier than, 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 than a lot of other places. Texas might be harder than most, but there, there are certain, there is, I've seen them for myself. There are certain spots in, in the country where you're like, oh my God, all they got to do is that? Oh my God, I'm, I'm totally in. Like, that's so cool. And it's it's insane, like to to see, to see how easy it is to get a, to get in the United States of America, which is fine. If you make it, you make it. But if you make it, do something with it. At the same time, if you get caught, the law is the law. So we gotta we gotta leave things at that. Because if if I went to Mexico and I broke the law over there, I would have to adhere to every fucking rule of their laws. So we have to understand things that way. Right. The law the law of the United States is the law of the United States. The same way the law of Mexico is the law of Mexico. And there's nothing I can do about either one of those things. So if I were to cross the border illegal, illegally into Mexico and I was caught and or I was doing something wrong and or I was a criminal and I wasn't a citizen, a citizen of, of the country, be it as it may, then, then things happen because I have to adhere to the law of the country, that it is what it yes. is. And, and that's something that we have to recognize. It's not about being in, in, it's not about inequality when it comes to that aspect. You know, what, what, what it comes down to when it comes to Biden bringing these uh, all of a sudden complete executive orders in this first two weeks of, 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 um, of administration is that he has an agenda. And we have to complete, completely understand that his agenda is to one, erase Donald Trump from uh, president, from history. And right. it's, it's not just him, it's media. It's, 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 there's a lot of people in media that are trying to do the same thing. And it's been we'll, a very concerted effort. <laughs> absolutely. And, and we'll come to that. Uh, uh, later uh, in the podcast, but um, Biden, uh, Biden bringing these um, these executive orders to haste, and and I think you said you, you uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There's 45 executive orders at hand. I, I don't know the exact number, but it's over 40 now. Yeah, over 40. Okay, over 40. Yeah, yeah, that's insane. That's an insane <laughs> number. <laughs> And, and, and in the last country, cast, we read off the numbers, you know, in comparison of previous presidencies where they did like five in their first year or, you know, to like give some comparison. So 40 right. in the first two weeks is 
is and tyranny. Pain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tyranny, actually. Yeah. So that's it's insane. Um, you know, this 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 immigration thing, in, in my in my opinion, is is an overreach and a grab for a push for more sex trafficking. If you ask me. Mm-hmm. There's, there's definitely been a focus on our foreign relations and international policies, which is, you know, completely converse to America first to focusing on the pandemic and like, you know, get home settled before you start looking outwards and trying to fix other people's funds, you know, like take care of yourself. And when we speak of these immigration things, we don't mean to be insensitive because like, as we're mentioning, like America does have a history of being like a sanctuary country that when other places are at war that we intend to keep a safe place for for all peoples and that that is like a cornerstone cornerstone of our belief and culture in this country is that every human life matters that there's nothing that degrades one human life from another and we've fought to um, perpetuate this and even with you know the BLM and the culture of today it's still on that note it's like it's ingrained in us and it's just expressing itself in different ways but similar to how kind of um i personally don't like encourage or condone uh abortion as being like accepted into like a convenient aspect of our culture or like a general and you know and i know that's controversial i think it should be it's tragic and should be treated as a tragedy and you know handled as with that kind of care and and reverence as such to if in the situations that it needs to be handled and such but um nevertheless also abortion is somewhat especially at this present state of human consciousness is kind of inevitability. So to just outright outlaw it, then you're encouraging people to do it in, you know, in alleys and whatever and coat hangers and however they can, they can. And then you're just endangering the mother on top of the the child. So it's creating more harm than good. And likewise with immigrants, like um, you, if it's an inevitability, so you want to be mindful and prepared for these situations so that it's not less humane than it needs to be, but also not to just so much normalize it that you're being reckless with it. Like you can be kind to somebody and polite without having unprotected sex with them, (laughs) you know? So like, likewise with immigrants and our relations in foreign and having outside entities that don't have an accountability to the fabric and stability and integrity of America that we need to be mindful of how we intermix and and how we balance our energies that we can't just be expending outward and funneling out our energy to and siphoning it off and not replenishing in ourselves and not making our own America you know made in America goods and not having that own um, self-reliance within ourselves. We can't just be bleeding out and be a resource and a battery for the rest of the world. And that's essentially what these executive orders are turning us into. And that battery that America isn't from just the constitution, it's from the blood, sweat, and tears of the Americans in our daily life and work and energy and attention and faith and commitment that we give to this country and each other. I agree 100%. Absolutely, one hundred percent. That's that. That yeah, you you hit the. Yeah, but thank you. Just to yeah, to you were so in depth, and I love everything that you shared about how this is playing into a bigger um, scheme of the child trafficking. And as much as you can oppose like Donald Trump's wall, because of course, if there's people in need in the world, those that have should support the have-nots, and that's something that's ingrained in American culture. And so, of course, we have that empathy for others that are in need of refuge that we want to be able to offer that to them. But part of the implications of the wall, naturally, is that if you have these checks at border points, then there's, you know, it's more challenging to traffic people. And people are treating now, like, even as they've been parading all of these QAnon folk to um, a lot of Q believers have been coming out that they're denouncing Q and realizing that they were, um, that it was all fake and they've been interviewing all these people to, but, and to say that, to apologize for believing that the government was made of all these satanic pedophiles when there's been documentation for decades of right. political officials having indiscretions with minors right. like this isn't coming from nowhere it's fixated into like political office to um, compromise somebody and then have them 
because those are positions of power, like they're leading huge waves. So you can't have something be volatile, volatile in those kind. You have to have checks and balances right. and whatever ways they figured out how to do that they have, and they have a system and it's been working thus far. So Biden has his own checks and balances. He has his own pictures and, and like evidence to, to compromise, um, him should he go out of line. So, you know, and Trump had that too, and he got challenged with a lot of it and you know and he's had the same kind of approach to all of it of you know he's willing to have his skeletons be brought out from the closet and have it shown for the sake of being able to say what he he wants you know and take that for what it is you don't have to agree with him but for if he says that people should have a free platform like he's not allowed to be on social media right now a person in america is not allowed on social media right now like that should be concerning to us <laughs> that anyone should, because if anyone can be kicked off of social media at large. Right, uh, I, I agree <laughs> with that. Not, not only that, but he's a public figure. He isn't, right. he isn't the president anymore, and yet he's been impeached, and you cannot impeach a public figure. He's a, a citizen of the United States at this point. Right. He, he, he did his job, and his job is over, and that's how it is. And I understand that every, everybody wants to insist that he's still fighting um, the voter fraud and this and that, and he is still as dangerous. he can constantly... He can constitutionally do that. That's what people don't seem to realize, that he's in his own right to, to still do what he's doing. He, he's been shut down in a lot of local um, uh, uh, court hearings and, 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 and whatnot, uh, court sessions. He, he's been shut down, you know, which is fine because in, in a lot of states, there hasn't been evidence. There hasn't been enough evidence, enough logical evidence. Let's put it that way. OK, a lot of it has been circumstantial. A lot of it has been things that they can fight off, which has been mm -hmm. just fine, which is probably why he hasn't they haven't uh, found the smoking gun in the case. Mm -hmm. Now, right. we understand that there, there, there are a few smoking guns that they haven't looked into yet, being that a lot of computers and, and two separate states were connected to the Internet, which shouldn't have been possible at all. Which was which would be absolutely one hundred percent illegal to have these 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 computers that are connected to to people voting and connected to live internet at the same time. That's absolutely one hundred percent illegal and, right. and, and and shouldn't even there there shouldn't even be a question as to why. Well, why would that be illegal? Well, one there's only one reason because if there's something live going on as as in internet feeds happening at all times the only the only thing that can happen is that things can be misconstrued in numbers the same way photoshop works is the same way the internet works things can always happen in algorithms and alg algorithms and this and that so right. things can always change it's like a flow uh, a river a river that's all constantly flowing so you kind of have to look at the internet like that and 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 the truth is, a lot of people don't 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 seem to make don't seem to have that that connection as to why voter fraud and and a live internet connection would 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 even make a difference. Right. It makes a huge difference. In fact, it makes probably all the difference in the world, and probably two, two or three of the states in uh, in the elections that just happened. And again, it's not to suggest that the vote that the voter fraud um, led to a Donald Trump victory. There, there's no evidence to suggest that. The only evidence to suggest that is that there's a lot of people that are sitting here questioning what right. has been going on in the last month and a half and or two months, and especially the last two weeks. The, the approval ratings. That's bizarre, That's right? <laughs> Again, Biden's at 49% approval rating in the first two weeks. Most popular president. president. <laughs> exactly. The most voted for president that has to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, because these, these aren't... These aren't contradictory facts or, 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 or uh, uh, exaggerations that we are putting out there. It's being put out there by the news. CNN, in their first week after Donald Trump lost office, dropped, I think, 60% in, in viewership. I mean, maybe, okay, maybe I'm wrong because the number that's coming in my head now is 44%. But either way, huge drop. 44% is a huge drop. Nobody was interested in watching you, CNN, or, or any other uh, left-wing uh, radical news network that was doing anything aside from bashing Donald Trump because that's the fuel that, that seemed to make people move forward with their lives. Because I imagine 
the only reason I, the only thing I could imagine that it, it was consistency. It was something that was consistent for them, especially during the COVID months. Okay. Is that the how bad, bad of a guy job and we have doing. to get him out and I'm going right. to do my part to vote on <laughs> November, <laughs> you know, and then right. I'll, I will have done it. <laughs> and, and then, then, he, and then, then it you guys can get in and then, the, you know, again, and it worked because, because think about, th think about it miraculously. And, and it hasn't, it hasn't even been a month and a half, almost two months, maybe, but it has, I don't think it's even been a month and a half, but COVID's on the low all of a sudden, <laughs> like Donald Trump's, like Donald Trump predicted somehow that when Biden was, was put into office, that things about COVID would disappear automatically, just miraculously. And yes, people are still double masking. I've seen it with my own eyes. There are still people double masking. Even though Fauci went double backed on it days after <laughs> saying times, that it made common times. it made se common sense, but then there's no data to prove. And there's even been other news reports where they say um, that if you wear two masks, that gives you seventy percent protection. But if you wear three masks, then that's ninety percent protection. Which means that what was one mask then like fifty percent or so, so one and, mask for and, an entire year. Right? But, you know, that's what they were. And then, of course, there's like the N95, so that's supposed to be 95% effective. So if that was the standard, if that's what we're needing is at least 90%, um, you know, effectiveness, then why not mandate, why not mass issue along with your stimulus and everything? Every person needs to have an N95 mask because we need to make sure that it's sealed. Don't like just count on the populace to, you know, like do their, you know, three layers of a surgical or cloth. <laughs> mask to get they that 90 and then yeah, there's you know and then at the same time Fauci you know who's the official authority is also saying there's no data to show that even while they're doing these like statistics and percentages of how much <laughs> if you add on but if you have three masks it's 90 percent. so logic <laughs> then would assume that four masks would be 100 are we there yet no maybe five how many do I need <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> when I'm suffocated, then I'll know that I have enough protection. Exactly. <laughs> right. Job, right. Well. When, when you're suffocated, when when you all of a sudden can't breathe, it, it, it has nothing to do with your glasses being fogged up anymore and, and, and everything to do with the fact that you just simply can't breathe, you know? <laughs> um, well, you know, with, with that being said about, about Donald Trump, you know, you, you pointed out something to me today that, that um, was interesting. And that's the fact that he withdrew from the um, Screen Actors from the Guild administration. Yes. Basically, from Donald Trump withdrew from Hollywood. Yeah. Today? Was it today? Uh, it might have been a day or two ago, but um, it was kind of preemptive where it's like, uh, we're going to fire. I quit. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. So um, the Screen Actors Guild, for reasons, I didn't realize that they could do this. Although I guess they release people for a lot of like indiscretion type stuff. Um, if you're online, that a lot of people get kicked out. But so because of the insurrection on the 6th and Trump inciting violence, the Screen Actors Guild was going to officially remove Trump. And, you know, he has such notable works as Home Alone 2 and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and others. <laughs> so um, he's very proud of his work. But, right. in <laughs> but in response to hearing that he was going to be removed, he just responded, um, who cares? So, and then in response to that, the Screen Actors Guild just replied, thank you. So it's done. But the interesting about the Screen Actors Guild, which, um, you know, and we're in California. So uh, the Screen Actors Guild, of course, is a guild that you belong to, to perform as artists in certain productions. So if you don't have your SAG card, then you don't qualify for certain things. And it's kind of like the chicken or the egg, because like, you have to have performed in something or have like experience on your resume in order to like get a get into SAG, but then you can't perform in something SAG until so anyways, but um once you do, you're part of SAG, you're part of the union, and they have their own like rules of conduct, and you know, it determines, of course, their rates in the industry and all of that, but they also have a president and they're essentially their own um, union and nation within a nation. So Hollywood is kind of like its own Washington, D.C., if you, if you can think of it as, as that. And these people around the country and also the world that are belonging to SAG are almost more beholden to that oath of dedication and commitment than they are in their American nationalism. So, um, you know, even media people like 
performing on the news reports are also, I don't know exactly, but I would assume that they have their SAG membership as well. So when they're reporting the news, they're doing it in con conjunction or commitment to SAG above America first, you know, so um, the truth as an, isn't as significant or important than whatever the agenda of the ratings and the the promotion of who, what industry that they need to make sure is, you know, featured in that segment rather than what the actual most pressing issue for America is in that day and time. And it's evidence and evident in how we conduct our, our journalism and yeah, that we have, um, there, there was a great post that said, uh, there was a person in China who was speaking with someone in America and was wondering why Americans are so obsessed with the news. And uh, they didn't realize that people don't watch the news as much in China. And it's because in China, people know that it's a propaganda machine that's intentionally programming oh, wow. you and conditioning you towards a certain school of thought that these are like the key players. This is who you respect. This is your values. That that's its sole purpose. And yet here in America, we still like promote it or like uphold it as gospel truth of like, this is the world, this is virtue, you know, <laughs> because the TV said so, it knows. That's absolutely true. So for Trump to withdraw from SAG, that means that he's no longer taking his orders from them, that he doesn't have to worry about his contracts and his sponsors and all that kind of stuff in that sense, that he's not trying to book his next gig. And that's another big thing for him to even have done his entire presidency as a SAG member. I agree. I agree 100%. So, like, he's quitting the now. <laughs> They're letting him and go now. the same thing about Ronald Reagan, and Ronald Reagan was another unpopular president. In the right? United and States. there's been a lot of people even, um, there's been, like, jokes like predictive programming for Arnold Schwarzenegger being president one day, you know, and there was even a couple years back when he was governor, people that were part of the Amend for Arnold group that were, like, people shouldn't have to be a natural-born citizen in order to become president. Of America. So I was a part of that campaign because I was 17 and I wish you could ask my dad <laughs> because he actually forced me to be a part of that campaign as, as, as a young teenager and I actually enjoyed every bit of it. I got to meet um, uh, Tia Campbell, I think her name was, Tia Campbell from Wayne's World. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And her name was Cassandra. Oh. Yeah, I got to meet her, bro. Yeah, because she was, she was a, a oh, woman for... Schwarzenegger, yeah. Wow. Ask my mom. Ask my mom. You'll see. Well. <laughs> the truth. Yeah, I ran for his campaign. But yeah, he sucks now. Yeah. No. <laughs> Republicans, am I right? <laughs> am I right? Yeah. <laughs> so that was interesting. And another interesting on the Biden um, thing. So like, not only are they trying to impeach them, and there's been a lot of controversy about his impeachment trial that um, Trump's like, uh, main five lawyers resigned over difference of opinion of how to handle um, the the arguments and that he replaced his cabinet with two people and one argue defended the Epstein case and then another right. one um, refused to defend Cosby or no no one one said that Epstein didn't kill himself and then the other um, refused to represent Cosby maybe because they knew that the Cosby accusations were a takedown. I don't know, like, I wasn't in the room with Cosby and his victims, supposed, you know, alleged victims or whoever, so not to discredit whoever, like, me too, but, um, you know, also right before Cosby was planning to purchase, I forget if it was NBC, and yes, that was a, that's right. that, that was a big no-no, so they did, they did away with that, <laughs> right. and then he was tried, and, and no more, and everybody hates him, and they he, didn't want he couldn't afford to. In, 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 in my opinion, it wasn't going to be Black-owned, no matter what. No, no. It was no. NBC or CBS. It but, was one of those, but, I can't yeah, remember. It wasn't going to yeah. be, it was, they, they had, there was no way in hell it was going to be Black-owned. No. And no. that's, that's an interesting, you're absolutely right. So yeah. it's interesting that his lawyer would choose not to represent, but maybe he, yep. yeah, ah, absolutely, ah, 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 yeah, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he gets thrown in jail for these things that never happened, in my opinion. There, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't go there because judicially, Not to say he was thrown in jail for it. But at the same right. time, what a convenient time to be thrown in jail for it. He's right. almost eighty years old, and then all of a sudden he gets accused of all this and that and the other thing. And it's, it's just not. It just, it's just convenient timing, if nothing else. And so, again, not to you know, put it that meant, way. 
mentioning the checks and balances. So just like, Agreed. you know, exactly. if, if you're going to be in those types of echelons of you don't get in those circles, you know, without having gone through certain rings. You're um, absolutely right. Yep. So that's one of that he, that might've very well absolutely been in his past. And yep. they were like, now's the time to bring it forward because <laughs> no, 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 we're going to smack you back. Right. So that's interesting choice for um, Trump's lawyers. And yeah, there's definitely this like huge push for impeachment where like, how can you impeach a citizen? So like, are you saying, that he's still president if you have to impeach them or at the very least it's it's at least a very blatant um move to preempt him running in four years again because they anticipate that the people that are trump pro-trump and like all his diehard supporters now are still going to be that much so four years from now um because some people you know like he's basically christ <laughs> well <laughs> you know? I, I i agree that he's going to have a substantial following if he if he did run in four years. If he did I run don't in four see years, him running in four years, I don't. I see don't see it. That's a lot, but it's, I think he has other. He's going to be so old. Yeah, he's already seen what he can do from the presidency. So even if he were like an official warrior trying to like save America and all that kind of stuff, he would take a different route. I think this time around, if he was legitimate. But if he's what? just played his. Part in that because he's gone as far as he could, or who knows, maybe he is going to run for president. But, anyways, then nevertheless, the impeachment that would be an advantage of impeaching somebody who is now a civilian or former president <laughs> would be to prevent them from running in the future, right. would it's be all, like it, a lot, a logical move. So, like, art of war type stuff, but, but then, logical and or unconstitutional. So, they're, they're going right. to lose, they're going to be slapped down either way. And then they're like simultaneously criticizing Trump that um, how dare he like try to make this argument that you can't impeach a non-president. <laughs> and they're saying there is precedent for this, even though, you know, like where. Um, but then at the same time, in all the documentation of from his legal counsel, they're referring to him as the 45th president, never the former president, or in any way indicating that he is no longer. So they're trying to defend him on the grounds of you can't impeach a non-president, but then at the same time, addressing him as the current or not a non-president or Do not a call, previous president. Have you noticed on the news, and again, I don't I don't watch current media, but, but do they call Joe Biden the 46th president of the United States, the current president? President major major media outlets absolutely yeah okay okay yeah they're well, they're very sense. firm yeah. but yeah that's why i'm asking like they should be doing that considering that's his that should be his role at this point but yeah but then there are things like that where they speak of trump in such a bizarre way where they're dismissing it but then at the same kind of way legitimizing it and um like you've mentioned how they have this martyr now of uh what's her name marjorie taylor green i believe who's, right. um you know has a lot of in previous on tape record and in, in incidences of her um, speaking to Q in defense of QAnon or saying, you know, all that, that type of rhetoric. And so they're condemning her now. Um, but because she's on tape saying so and so eats, eats babies or that 9 11, like who um, a plane didn't fly into the Pentagon, or because she makes remarks like that, they want to completely dismiss that child trafficking or Satanists are even a thing, <laughs> you know? So like there's the official, when you look at like CNN or CBS's um, news reports and they're doing a video about QAnon, YouTube has a featured content link that's like a article from Wikipedia so that you can learn more of the uh, approved like official information from Wikipedia about QAnon and how QAnon is a disproved and dis <laughs> you know, um, that it's, discredited belief that the government is made of um satanic pedophiles which is fine when, but when, the thing is the more they start doing that and the more they start saying no 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 that's not true the more i'm gonna the more i'm gonna sit there and say no that's probably the more truth that's probably <laughs> there's probably more truth in that than anything else you're telling me right so like the more they, they push <laughs> it away from us yeah it's insane yeah yeah, they're trying to dismiss it in such an aggressive way that it makes it more, and they're trying to say it like to such an extreme of not just like that there's no evidence that Hillary Clinton in particular is a, a cannibal or pedophile, like they're not addressing it like that. They're just saying like Satanism, what's that? Like, 
child trafficking. I don't know, <laughs> you know, as if it's never existed. But, when at the same time, like there's all these rings that are getting broken up and they're treating it as if it's just like this, you know, like random person that's like robbing a liquor store are all these type of child trafficking rings. And instead of having the same type of um, organization and tiers that drug, you know, and all these other type of trafficking industries would have. I don't know why right. they and think that would be so independently <laughs> run. And that's just like little <laughs> niches of people that are misbehaving rather than a full worldwide global commodity of keep using people labor like that's not new it's in it's all throughout history and it just didn't stop it's just moved and been masked in different ways and you know it's nice to sweep it under the rug and pretend that it doesn't exist and meanwhile while Americans are so preoccupied and like wear your three masks so you don't kill my grandma <laughs> you know that we can just ignore that you know 800,000 children I think was the number um, that go missing per year in America Agreed. And not, and not just that, but media wise, that's, that's been a story that's been around at least since the eighties, since, since, right. since the late seventies, since Donahue, since uh, Oprah, you right. know, they've done stories of child sex trafficking and sex trafficking and or satanic rituals on children. Right. They've done those stories. Right. And we sit, we sat there and we took them as a sensational story as, as good journalism and or entertaining entertaining mm -hmm. journalism and and we have never taken those stories seriously mm -hmm. and the truth is the th the things that that we've never taken seriously seem to be the things that happen to be happening which is why they put them in the form that they do mm -hmm. so that we can sit there and and be desensitized to them so that when they actually do come about either they become unbelievable which is i believe what we're at now cog cognitive cognitive dis dissidence is what they call it right mm -hmm. um you know, so uh, it, it's it's just like a pedophile, like conditions, a child conditions, a family to, you know, put them in these situations where they can't necessarily speak out or you do some subtle things to like push the boundary of appropriateness. Like that's been our culture at large. And even as we're mentioning this, like um, as they've been parading these QAnon people to apologize, then at the end of it, they make the joke of like, oh, but we're really like that. Ha ha ha. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, they'll joke of like, oh, um, these Q people think that everyone's a clone. And um, then Trevor Noah's like, oh, the weekend, they're on to us. You know, and then um, he said, like, there's so many conspiracy. So he's like alluding that, of course, we're clones, you know, but that's the joke that they were right. Haha. -ha. And then um, he had another thing of like, there's so many conspiracies. It's um, you don't notice when there's like an oddball one in there. It's like how there's so many flavors of Oreos that you don't even notice the human flesh one. Ha ha ha. Holy shit. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. those Q folk are always like with the, with, because they eat people. And then there was like a Jimmy Kimmel clip where he was interviewing another, where he was showing a clip of Anderson Cooper interviewing somebody who was denouncing Q and the person that was being interviewed said, I believed even you, Anderson Cooper, um, ate babies. So I want to apologize to you for that. And then it cuts back to Jimmy Kimmel. And he's like, wouldn't that, I know it's CNN or whatever, but wouldn't it be funny if just then Anderson Cooper brought out a baby sandwich and took a big bite? And, you know, wouldn't that be funny? Funny, right? He says how, would that, how would that even be funny? How is that funny? No. It, that would be horrific. How, but, you know, it's like they're they're teasing those little things and like at, right after the inauguration, even for the inauguration to have those particular performers of Lady Gaga and <laughs> J-Lo, like, you know, like of all people, they've been getting so much attention all this year from the not, QAnon not folk. That, but, but I sent you a screenshot of Chrissy Teigen suddenly getting attention from the Biden administration. Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 um, she the, was the ambassador of such and such, or I don't, I don't remember what it was. No, she was the only, she was the only celebrity that Biden was following on his social oh, media. Oh, that's what it was, right. Of and, all people, right. come on, guys. Right, <laughs> Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks being a part of the Thro inauguration. Throwing the inauguration okay. ball, like they are just, for those that have eyes and ears to hear, you know, they're smudging it in our face. Right. <laughs> but, you know, right. but like under the rug and like, ha ha, funny, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. These, these at the same time, this is they're not funny. At the same time, desensitizing us to like, 
ah, ha, ha, cannibalism, ha, 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 cannibalism, ha, 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 cannibalism, normal, right, cannibalism, even Chrissy Teigen has, like, videos of her saying, like, I would eat a person, wouldn't you, if a chef prepared it really, really right and good, there's tons of stuff of her, like, in, on all of those Twitter posts and stuff that she deleted. I do believe that's one of the ones she deleted, <laughs> is that she would, she admittedly, uh, uh, you know, she admitted to um, eating eating human flesh. She deleted that tweet. There's 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 interesting reasons why these people do the things that they do. There's interesting reasons why they make movies about the zombie virus and why they make movies about people eating human flesh and this and that. You know, so the, it's it's it, you don't have to believe in it. And and truthfully, if you don't, it doesn't make you it doesn't make you a bad person, probably makes you a very stable, very sane human being. In fact, you know, normal but, but, life. I miss it. <laughs> right. I, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, that, that being said, what, once you, once you see certain things there, there and certain coincidences, coincidences, they stop becoming coincidences right. and they start becoming things that, that you start to see as fact. You can not see it. Exactly. Um, their symbolism uh, like how many celebrities need to cover one eye <laughs> so photographic so artistic right all of this all of this <laughs> yeah with the, look, look at this the there's so many <laughs> doing one of these yeah exactly. yeah right yeah people yeah. are gonna judge us now <laughs> no no well, they better not they better not because we're like, making we're just, a point for those that don't know these are those the are ies <laughs> yeah exactly those are ies exactly keep an eye out and you'll notice your favorite celebrity <laughs> probably has a picture where they're doing a triangle over their eye or covering one eye or has their hair over one eye or has a checkerboard pattern or has um yeah the 666 okay even trump like huge you know all the yes. time all the time all the time Yes, absolutely. You can even see absolutely. it towards like after Q started, um, cause you know, like even Q has had, you know, its own infighting and judgments of him and Pence and all, all the people. And so there's been like all that um, discord amongst the Republican party of who's like the real re Patriot Republicans and who's not and who's on the <laughs> Democrat side. And it's, it's wild out there. Unity. Totally. <laughs> one, of the, one of the other things they do, which, which is what they, which is something that they do often is that, is, is that, the, the media and, and and the government but 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 most of the media because well you know hand in hand but um they they, they like to do this thing where, where they have this 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 narrative this this story um uh that they want they, they want to push out that they want to make sure that they that the um uh that that we get to see you know to make sure that that's the one thing that we see over anything else and and a, a good recent example is the hunter biden story um, as we've brought to you in past in past episodes, Hunter Biden is not the most innocent human being on earth. Hunter Biden being the son of uh, the current uh, in the current administration, Joe Biden. So we, we have to um, take these stories with him as with, with a grain of salt. Uh, Mr. Hunter Biden came out with a book recently. What what was his book called? Do you have it up? I I, I don't have it. Oh, um, better things. I think it's called better things yeah, or be better be times. Be beautiful things. A beautiful memoir. things. <laughs> okay. One generic title, beautiful things. Two, supposedly it, it taps into his his um, uh, abuse with drugs and this and that, which I I kind of doubt it does. I'm pretty sure it sugarcoats a lot of what he does because there's blatant evidence of him being on photo, being on video of him. For some reason, why on video? I, it's it's beyond me. But him on video doing drugs, um, him on video with in, the infamous pictures with his niece, gross, compromising pictures with his own niece. With uh, who was it? Um, Ma Malia, Malia. Um, oh, that's right, uh, Melania Obama. Trump. Uh, no, 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 um, no, no. Um, no, uh, Obama's daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. That one. Um, what's her name? It's not Melania. No, Malia. Oops, sorry. Don't no, look at I, I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Dang. What am I doing? I don't know. What are you doing? Are, are you buying <laughs> something right now? <laughs> like, did you just buy something? <laughs> am I buying something? I'm trying to do this one. What'd you buy me? <laughs> it's still showing everything. <laughs> Oh, beautiful things, Hunter Biden. Oh, I see it. Yes, you 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 brought it up. Okay, there it is, for twenty eight dollars in the United States. But look, it was number one seller in the Chinese, Chinese biographies. biographies. <laughs> oh my god! 
<laughs> Seems fitting. <laughs> that is insanity. Seems fitting. No kidding. Holy crap. Number yeah, one in like Chinese it. biographies. That is insane, Kamiko. It really is. So, and oh, uh, another thing I want to bring up was um, another one of Biden's big actions was he uh, extends the New START nuclear treaty with Russia as risks rise. So this is wow. for um, a treaty with Russia for five more years in our arms race. And so it's interesting that for so much of this time, right, there's been this huge thing about Russia and Russia interfering with our um with our elections and all that kind How of stuff. How many years? And, Four years? <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah. then uh, since, and then there was like a lot of stuff that came out from Hunter Biden's laptop of, you know, um, relations with Russia and China and the Ukraine. And so it's interestingly enough, magically now that, um, that, yeah, now that Biden's in office, that he did a video announcing that they uh, extended the treaty and that at the same time, though, he gave a stern message to Putin that, um, you know, we're, we've had, an, America's had enough of you messing with our elections and stuff. So knock that off. We're done with that. So we're cool with Russia now, guys. <laughs> Don't worry. Well, <laughs> That's they, done. <laughs> you know, they, they got their hands slapped. So I assume yeah. they learned their lesson. So this Trump so was all messed up with them, but we're good now. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. It's normal. <laughs> It's normal now. Everything is fine. We're good. We're and yeah, that was the um, other thing was that Biden has also made an announcement that none of his family is going to be involved in office. And uh, yeah, that he's very proud of Hunter with his book. So don't worry, like they're not going to be involved in office. He's not like giving handouts to everybody, but he will be a book bestseller. So, you know, and be <laughs> booking that tour to promote it or whatever. So don't worry, they're getting... They're getting their payouts. Um, the current president <laughs> of the administration, ladies and gentlemen, is letting his crackhead son make money while you sit there and you sit there and suffer. <laughs> let's put let's put let's put some fucking uh, 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 aspect and and some actual like real common sense into that thought. Like honestly, his book gives me hope. Hunter Biden has done not a goddamn thing in his life <laughs> just like his father in the 45 years he's been in office right. <laughs> you can look both of those facts up i've done more in my lifetime and then then both of them put together to accomplish something that actually helps somebody else in my own community right. and miss miss kali can say the same thing in fact a lot of people in our communities in our backyard the majority <laughs> That we've done more to help other people in our communities than those two people put together. Most people aren't selling out America. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. I don't have any, I don't, I have no ties to China, to China I promise. <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> Full disclosure, exactly, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. No kidding. On that note, oh, this cast brought to you by, no, just kidding. <laughs> right, well, this cast brought to you by Mr. <laughs> Spackle. <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to bring up bring a quick update to you guys um you know it, it, it's a quick bounce back um just, just uh, like we told you um it wasn't going to be a long episode because the last one was so extensive and so informative and if you haven't watched it yet we hope you do all of those have caught it already we've gained two or three new followers since then so thank you guys so much for subscribing yeah. and thank you for the feedback we we appreciate all the positivity um, uh, but yeah, this one's not going to be just not going to be as long. Quick update, quick boom, boom, boom. Here we go. And if you're still thirsty, go check out our channel. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Get, get on it. it. Get on it. There's so much more there to, to, to get on. Um, looking forward to more to more uh, episodes to to, uh, to do with you guys. Um, there are next one is number twenty. On. Right. There, 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 there's so much more going on right now. Like there, there's so much in, in the world that that's happening that that we're. Uh, setting up and getting ready to bring to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, so get ready because it's coming up. Miss Kelly, thank you so much, my dear. Thank you, Tootie, for all your work. And yeah, so excited to be offering this with everybody. Thank y'all for joining us on this mission and for your vigilance. Yes, yes, yes. So patreon.com slash off the mark cast. Um, we are on other, uh, other ventures. We will get there when we get there. Otherwise, please catch us on YouTube, please. And thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe. Stay vigilant, stay focused, and keep the peace. Bye.